Alright, welcome back guys. Uh, this is going to be episode 9 of Driven by Christ Auto. Oh man, I know everybody is just stuffed from eating all that wonderful food yesterday. Yesterday was Thanksgiving and uh, it was a great day at the homeless shelter. I went out there, I was actually able to preach a small sermon and bless the food man I thought I was gonna freak out and lock up in front of all the people down there at the homeless shelter but God got me through it God is so great Jesus is so great he got me through it man I thought I was gonna freak but uh anyways yesterday was good but we had a little bit of the problem the old sneaky devil got in got on us again and uh guys i'm i'm asking for prayers from anybody who sees this video prayer in numbers is a very powerful thing uh but unfortunately uh my wife jamie is not going to be here with us today she is in the hospital they are thinking that she has got a blockage in her heart and uh i mean she she was talking to me this morning everything's good so um so far but uh guys if y'all can pray you know just do a simple prayer you ain't got to be perfect at praying just put in a prayer for her. i love her she's got <laughs> i need her in my life to keep if y'all want to keep seeing these videos and see me you know walking in the path of god I, I gotta have her with me to do this i can't do it alone but that brings me to the word of the day before we go in here and open up shop my loving Lord we ask you to increase our thankfulness we've learned that being thankful not only brightens our day but opens our hearts more fully to you uh, hold on guys I gotta see what I don't want we want to encounter you in the midst of my of our circumstances let me go ahead and make a correction to this I always write everything down like me and mine I, and I need to quit doing that you in the midst of our circumstances so we look for signs in your presence as we walk along the path of our lives a grateful attitude opens both our hearts and our eyes enabling us to see you in many details as well as in the big picture of our lives we need to slow down and take time to notice all your blessings thanking you for them and enjoying your many gifts we ask you also to train us in trusting you more consistently being well-developed sturdy trust having well-developed uh, sturdy trust enables us to walk across the treacherous terrain without stumbling the more challenging our journey is the more frequently uh, we need to voice our confidence in you Lord I trust in your unfailing love this short prayer reminds us that you are with us you are taking care of us and you love us forever we have good reason to be joyful because you are absolutely worth our thankfulness and trust and our in your holy name Jesus amen so that's that man that covers a lot of things right now right there it's not about Thanksgiving it's not about the holiday of Christmas that is coming up you know we should be helping and loving to others and I'm going to start uh, for the driven by Christ ministries I'm gonna hope we gonna be cooking uh, dinner again for Christmas guys well I didn't you know we made it through Thanksgiving we're gonna do it for Christmas and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get up in here and get the shop opened up because I know people probably blowing down the phones all right so we ain't gonna have Jamie here with us in the office today y'all y'all be praying for her, but uh and uh nope not right now not right now we ain't even answering that phone uh, <clears throat> anyways uh be praying for her you know so she can get home and 
be be where she needs to be with with me and us studying the word of God. So let's let's go ahead and get up in here and get these doors open, get all the tire machines and everything turned on, battery charger, you know, go by, check everything. Normally there's like a little bin over here with metal in it that you gotta dump and get all it going, make sure everything's ready to go. Okay, so we done that. This is what you'd have to do in a real shop. You want to check your gas for your welding machine. You start running low on gas, son, on a TIG welder. It ain't good. Even though this is a wire welder, but we got a TIG welder. I'm, I'm, I'm actually a, a certified uh, gas tungsten arc welder. I used to weld uh, stainless steel, chromoly. I did all them weird metals. I've worked at nuclear power plants, and I did a lot of welding for Chevron offshore whenever I was... I guess I should say now in my younger days <laughs> but anyway so we got everything fired up let's go ahead and catch this customer all right so he has got a Ford Focus uh, GT this is the turbocharged four-cylinder they call it a Salem GW 500 but it's actually a Ford Focus uh, they're turbocharged four-cylinders but Anyways, it says, hey, don't ask me about what happened to my car. I wanted to impress this one girl. Oh, Lord, there ain't no telling what we're fixing to deal with. And I think I might have crossed some big bushes, holes, and stones. And I probably passed a cactus on the way, or perhaps even two. Please spare me the reprimand <laughs> as to the purpose of this car. While you're at it, check the fluid level with this amount of sand. I was quickly out of wiper fluid. It was worth it. Or it was worth it is all I will say. Let me know how the repair goes. All right, so we got a young boy who's got a rally car. These are also all-wheel drive cars, or they are in real life. And apparently he must have been taking a girl, you know, out in the... Since we're out here in, uh, so I guess we're out here in Arizona or somewhere, but, uh, <laughs> about in the desert, they were taking this car on a rally comp, and he was showing out for this girl. So we're going to go ahead and grab this, this customer's car and see what we're up against this morning. And Lord have mercy. Yeah, he, he did more than take out a few cactuses. gum, the whole front of the car. Man, he's missing a wheel. Alright, so he had to be towed in this morning. Uh, I think he had his own tow service. They got it out here on blocks. This car, it, yeah, we're going to get him hooked up, guys. The, the Lord is going to bless him today. This is actually a nice car. Uh, you know, even though it's kind of tore up, but we're going to get him fixed up. Let's, let's go ahead and move it into the wash bay. Uh... And uh, hopefully the engine does run. I, I don't know. It's, it's not looking very promising. Alright, so it looks like the main structure of the car, since these are rally cars, they are pretty strong. It looks like they're pretty good. Uh, we got some stains in the seat. I'm not going to even go there. Uh, Probably done spilt a whole bunch of drinks in here flying through a rally in this car. But uh, anyways, we're cleaned up. We're ready for the shop. So, uh, man, I'm, I'm thinking about getting this car for the shop, guys. This is an all-wheel drive. I know it's a turbocharged. Yep, it's going to be that K-Series K24 hybrid in here with a turbo on it. So, uh, let's... Let's get it on the uh, rack one and uh, see what we can do for this guy, or this boy. So we, we know we're gonna need that. He must have hit a hit a thing. We got the front windows broken. Um, oh man, he took out the radiator. That's not gonna be good. I hope. It, yeah, and he was losing coolant too. So it's not good, guys. I hope he didn't overheat this engine. Let's go ahead and. Uh, Pull the uh, cooling fan assembly off and pull this. Well, oh, we almost made a mess in this shop, boy. We almost done it. Let's go ahead and back out our coolant system. That way we don't dump everything out on the floor and be sliding the whole time we're working. Yeah, very little coolant was in this car. So 
I hope he didn't blow a head gasket on this thing. I mean, all right, so we got the radiator out. Everything else looks pretty, pretty decent. Let's check the oil condition. We know this kid was right. Oh man, he done butchered up the alternator. Oil life is about halfway. The oil still looks pretty good. Oh man, he even wiped out the oil pan, the steering rack, and the downpipe on the turbo. Okay, so we got some work ahead of us, guys. We have got some work. Um, I think let's go ahead and get the battery out. Go ahead and get it charging for the customer. Uh, <laughs> I can only imagine what this car went through. <laughs> I bet it was fun either way, boy. I know they were having fun. But we're going to get it fixed. Let's uh, get this thing up in the air because we well, are going to have to drain the oil. Uh, he did wipe out the oil pan. We're going to go ahead and do an oil change for him too. Alright, so let's use it. Check our magnetic drain plug. Check for any metal debris. Uh, oil came out pretty good, so I am going to assume that the motor is okay, but we're still going to diagnose it. So let's see. We're going to need. All right, we know we're going to need that oil pan. Uh, before you do this, guys, go into your O'Reilly's parts menu or your or your inventory. Ooh, we got a case. Hold up, guys. We got, we got a blessings case from working on that customer's car yesterday. The Camaro. He must have sent us a gift. Alright, so let's see what we got. The case of blessings. Alright, so we always want to go to the right. The right way in life. So we're going to choose that one. Hey, we got 190. We love those scrap points. And we want to stay center to the Lord's path. So let's take this center card. And looky there, guys, we have got a barn location, which we are going to use all of these uh, eventually once we do get there. So, yep, we're going to add that to our our uh, barn locations on our uh, map over there on the wall. But, all right, so. Uh, but, anyways, like I was saying, uh, go into your parts menu right here, your shopping list. Go ahead and clear it for the day. You don't want all that stuff from uh, the vehicle anyway, so we know we're going to need an oil pan, possibly a downpipe, a rack and pinion. We're going to try to fix this rim, but we're going to mark it anyways. Uh, um, we ain't going to need a new alternator. We shouldn't. I should be able to fix that, so uh, I think that's all I see on the front so far, so let's go ahead and get this tire pulled. We're going to have to break this tire off the rim in order to fix this. So, uh, let's knock this ball joint loose, or this tie rod in loose. Take the inner tie rod out. Let's go to the other side. And guys, I, in real life, I would normally have all my tools on a tool cart that I roll around with me. That's what I did in my, in my shop whenever I owned a shop. I uh, always kept everything on a tool cart. You can just roll your tools around with you. But all right, we're ready to go ahead and disconnect the power steering lines. Before we do that, we're just going to have another wonderful mess to clean up. Uh, go ahead and drain your power steering fluid before you pull your rack and pinion out because you're going to have power steering fluid everywhere. So, and you really want to do this in real life, too. You may not be able to get it all out of the system, but get most of it. And there's also a way you can undo that line and put you a catch pan up underneath it. And, uh, we'll, you know what? We're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to get our oil catch pan over here just in case, uh, we, uh, lose any, uh, power steering fluid whenever we drop this, uh, um, let's zoom in on the rack. Alright. Yeah, right here. It would be a line that would be attached to it that you would have to undo. But let's go ahead and pull it out. Alright. All the oil that could have fell got caught up in our little oil pan here. It's normally going to drip for a little while, so we'll leave that. Uh, we've done undone the, uh, we done drained the oil, so we can go ahead and drop the oil pan. Alright. We're going to go ahead and undo our down pipe, which luckily he does have the band clamps on here. So this is going to be really easy to remove. 
Let's look at the bottom end of this engine and see what condition. Yeah, he's been he's been taking care of the motor. Staying good on oil changes and everything else looking looking real good. So uh that's it's always a good thing to see. That means we're not gonna have to be pulling an engine out of the car. Let's get this out of the way. Alright, let's go over here and get back into our fabrication shop area and let's see what we can fix. Alright, we fixed the cooling fan. Probably just needed some trash cleaned out of it. It doesn't signify exactly what is going on with the part. But we're going to uh, comb this radiator. Hey, we was able to fix the radiator. It was probably full of mud. Uh, the rack and pinion, I know the seals are going to have to be rebuilt with sand. Yep, there goes your seals. And then we'll clean it up. Should be ready to go now. But unfortunately, that downpipe got destroyed. So let's go over here to the computer and hit our rallies up. And uh, go ahead and call them up and aggravate them for the day. Uh, yep, we are going to need another downpipe. So we'll order it. It should be on the way over here. We got a charge account through O'Reilly, so it's just you click on the part. It, they get the, uh, it's not a sales call, it's uh, a wheel call. That's what they call it, a wheel call, customer wheel call, commercial customer. So uh, they're going to be getting our part and getting it over here for us. But uh, let's go ahead and get this oil pan back on with a new gasket. Oh, oil pan was destroyed too. Okay, so another part. We'll be able to catch them real quick before they get out of there on that uh, oil pan. Alright. So we got to wait on that too. Uh, we was able to rebuild the rack, so let's go ahead and slide it back in. Um, we actually had an extra rack if we needed it. And connect our lines back up. We'll go ahead and put our inner tie rod in. Uh, now guys, since we did undo the uh, tie rods, um, we are going to have to align this vehicle again, so uh, don't forget that, which we're going to put it on our test path anyways, we're going to give it a good once over and make sure everything is good, I'm going to look at this wheel hub out here, alright, so that hub didn't get eat up with sand, let's check the other side and do our visual inspection and make sure okay bearing looks good brakes look good all right looking good guys uh all right so o'reilly just dropped off the parts outside the door we're gonna go ahead and grab them real quick yay all right back in all right um <laughs> but all right so we're gonna go ahead and put this old pan gasket on uh we can use some import gray gasket maker. These oil pans are normally aluminum. Uh, they're, they're not made out of that cheap tin like they are on my B18. Like the K-Series has an aluminum oil pan. So, But it's going to need a gasket maker. Import gray is all the way. I love that gasket maker. It is extremely good. Uh, um, you know, it, it, it's also called Honda Bond in the Honda world. So... We'll go ahead, put a thin little bead on that, do our dual torque technique, and boom, we got the oil pan on. Alright, let's get our brand new down pipe. And uh, since these are TIG welded flanges, all we got to do is slap those couplings on there and bolt it down. Very easy to take on and off. Alright, so now we got to go over here to the tire machine and see if we can't fix this... Uh, busted up uh, rim that we got going on we are not wanting to install anything so the GW 500 wheel we still got some tires and wheels from the Camaro in there that uh, we're gonna put up on uh, you know eBay or Facebook marketplace and get them sold they should sell pretty quickly they're uh, antique. I don't know why I'm going. I'm so used to jumping straight to that tire machine. But let's see if we can't uh, machine this wheel back right. Mm, we got it. Got it again. Oh boy, it was three stages of destruction on that. So that required some welding. So it was probably cracked up. That's probably from one of them big potholes and rocks he hit. But alright, so let's get the tire back on there. 
Make sure the tire is not damaged. All right, so the tire is in really good condition. It, it didn't get damaged, it was just the rim. So customer was lucky with that. All right, take this off. Let's go ahead and balance the tire. And it looks like we're using stick on weight. So as this tire balance, there's gonna be a laser guided line that you gotta turn the wheel in a certain position and you put that stick weight exactly where that laser line tells you to. And I'm gonna tell you something while this thing's making all this noise. Uh, whenever you're doing this in real life, guys, if you got your own shop, remember, even if you're taking your car to a shop, make sure that they clean the inside of the wheel before they stick this weight on because a lot of places these people don't know or they're just so lazy they don't want to do it and they won't clean off the spot where they're sticking the weight and you'll be going down the road and you'll hear something crash up underneath the fender it sounds like you ran over something and that's that wheel weight slinging off the tire and I've actually put a wheel weight through one of my plastic fenders and it also broke my windshield reservoir container this happened in, in my Acura TL so I know if y'all checked out the rest of my YouTube channel we put our first section of uh, driven by Christ automotive on there the real driven by Christ automotive not for car mechanic simulator but uh You'll be able to see that that 300 horsepower wheel TL on there. It sounds amazing. I love the way it sounds. And it's and it's not all that way from VTEC being locked out. It actually sounded more aggressive before I locked the VTEC out because it was mixing the air and the fuel wrong. It was just a bad mistake to do that. Don't ever lock out VTEC on a vehicle without tuning it. So, but anyways, let's go ahead and get this, this, this tire back on here. Uh, well, I guess it wants me to go to this tire first. We'll do it first. That's cool. We'll put it over here on this side because he is going to need a new rim. Uh, we've already got it marked. So let's go on over here to, we're going to call down here to our wheel shop that's down the road in town. They keep every type of wheel. It's called Wheel World. Uh, they literally have every tire and rim in stock all the time that you can possibly ever think of. They always have at least eight of them. So even stock vehicles. I mean, that's the reason why they call it Wheel World. I mean, it's they have every wheel in the world there. <laughs> A big old warehouse. So... It's called a GW5. Let's go ahead and type it in so we're not just sitting here all day. GW5. Why are you doing this? Okay, we'll do 500. There she is. All right. So uh, we're going to need one of them. Um, I think it was a 19-inch wheel, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on, bring the shopping list back. All right, 19 inch wheel. Uh, we're not going to put no ET on there. You don't want the tires sticking out on the fenders like the JDM cars. That's We'll build that whenever we get us a JDM car and we build it for the drag strip. So we got that. Uh, we need to go over here and see what tire. Okay, 235, 30, 19. So 19, 235. 35 that's exactly what we got to remember so let's go to the uh, the tire section of uh, wheel world uh, and what was it I think it was a sport tire yep yeah, sport tire 235 35 19 uh, 19 235 35 and there we go Wheel World will be down here. They they real fast. They're just like O'Reilly's. They'll be right on the way down here with a delivery truck. And let's uh we're gonna go ahead and pull this engine back down or this car back down while we're waiting on it. And uh we're gonna go ahead and start ordering body panels and headlights. 
uh, basically the front end of this car and this car will have to be repainted um, uh, let's get over here and we're gonna access uh, our body shop central our body workstation uh, that's a, another shop that's locally in town they literally have like I'm it was so blessed for us to get this area where we're in because we are literally next to every big hub distribution center that you can think of so they got literally every part normally always in stock so uh front left fender we're gonna i think the front right fender was there but we're just gonna go ahead and replace it anyways because i know it was probably whooped up on uh we need the i want to say it's the let me check it out left side mirror got it and the front windshield all right so we got all we got all that we'll be waiting on those parts while we're waiting on all them parts to get here we are going to uh, get down here let's get this windshield wash reservoir out the way because it's just all up in the way where we're trying to work so we're going to have to drain it out. Probably had a lot of sand in it. Alright. Normal mode. Alright. There we go. Alright. So now we can get to our tensioner roller. Pull it out. Uh, looks like the belt also got destroyed too. So we're going to have to be hitting our rallies back up again. Um, they still ain't. I'm going to have to hit them up. Just all there is to it. We we keep them busy at Driven by Christ, son. They just, whew, they they probably get tired of hearing from us needing all these parts. So they'll be bringing that on over while we're we're gonna check, look at everything. Turbo looks good. Uh, everything looks pretty good. So we're gonna go over here and rebuild this alternator for him. Probably got a bunch of sand in it. Needs to be cleaned out and old. Let's we'll see if we can get it on the first try. And we did. That's all it was. It was just a clean up and basic maintenance. Nothing was destroyed. And, well, you know, parts are here. Heard them knocking on the door. So let's go out here and go get our parts. There's a bunch of parts. So we're going to drag them in. Pull them over here. All right. Yay. Okay. Let's, uh... Let's go ahead and slap this alternator back on. Put our belt up back on. Our new belt, fresh out the box. We run with them Gates belts. Those are some of the best belts that you can get on the market right now. They're called Gates. So if you ever go to O'Reilly's, pay that extra money. Even I think AutoZone even carries them, but I just I, I'm not affiliated with them. Uh, I, you know, I only go to them if I absolutely have to because of the way that they treated me whenever I was a teenager and I used to go to their stores. And then they also let somebody rob my telephone number and they wouldn't update my customer information. Like, I didn't have that same telephone number no more. And uh, I end up getting a new phone number and I tried to update my customer account and they told me, oh, we can't do that. You just got to remember your old number. Well, somebody went up there whenever they did get my old number, they updated their parts onto there and they took all of my parts. So now I lost warranties over thousands of dollars worth of parts so that just kind of ended my business with AutoZone right there O'Reilly's has got it where they can update your customer information AutoZone probably needs to take some notes in that but uh anyways let's get this windshield wash reservoir back in here we're gonna work on fluids and we'll go ahead and drop this uh new radiator uh refurbished radiator and cooling fan assembly in get all the wires hooked up for it all right so we got that in and we'll go ahead and get our body parts out and get it into there but before we do that because it is a lot easier to access everything without the front bumpers and all the stuff on it let's go ahead and uh, slap this battery into here there we go 
Now we should be able to crank up the car, but we need to uh, we need to add fluids and remember guys, oil, oil. Always do your oil first. Wait for the jug to flip over and count to five. One, two, three, four, five. And that's it. You'll be right on point every time if you remember that in this game. So, uh, we'll do the windshield wash reservoir. Not take the windshield wash reservoir out. Come on. Back to normal mode. Uh, yeah, here we go. Let's go ahead and get this into there. And we'll go ahead and put some coolant in the motor. Uh, I'm not sure what Ford... Uh, the Ford Escort uses um, I think it is the, the regular green but I could be mistaken but in here all of its green so it's a 50 50 so go ahead and get the coolant in there remember we want to fill this thing all the way up because it is going to have air pockets in it and as those air pockets bleed out it's going to drain your fluid level until it's at the correct level in your engine block and your heater core and all the other areas that this uh engine coolant works because guys that's how your heater works there is two hoses that run let me say right back here there's normally two hoses that come off of the back of the block and they don't show it in this game but they run up to the firewall this metal wall that it's in between you and your cab and there's a little bitty miniature radiator inside of there it looks just like this one but it's really small and it's it doesn't have a cap or anything on it but it pushes that hot coolant from the engine through that little radiator and whenever you turn on your heater in your car a, a fan motor in the dash blows air across that really really hot coolant filled radiator and that's how your uh car uh uh, heats itself up during the winter time. It, it makes the ambient temperature warm. Is it's using the the heat from the engine to warm the car? Pretty good idea, I think. But let's go ahead and uh, that's the reason why whenever you first crank your car up, why it's cold, it, the heater doesn't ever work <laughs> unless you got one of them new fancy electric cars. It's you know it's got its own electrical heating element and it's immediate heat. So uh that's all right we ain't got to worry about charging this car up uh oh they needed a right side mirror too so we're gonna have to call up uh we're gonna have to get on here and uh get back into our body work or get up get a hold of our body workshop and let them know that we need a right mirror too all right got it on the way so let's go ahead and put the rest of these components on here while we're waiting on that mirror uh, front bumper yep go ahead and slide in them I thought I ordered lights boy they be forgetting stuff Ooh. all right I don't think I ordered the lights we'll get that in with the uh, with the mirror they'll they'll we, we got a charge account through them too so let's see all right get this fender on Get that on, and we need this mirror. And I th if anything that I took off, I can, if we can fix it, we'll just, like I said, we'll just put it up on Facebook or eBay and we'll sell those parts. Uh, I don't think he had a, a license plate. Let me see, which, where is he from? Uh, so we're going to have to pull this license plate off to see. Uh, license plate standard that's all it says so what we're gonna do now a lot of the times you got to watch out for this uh, so we're gonna mark that part we're gonna go down here to normally Jamie deals with the DMV section and the license plates but we're just gonna have to get in there and do it ourselves today I'm hoping my baby makes it home here soon I'm missing her all right so standard license plate We'll go ahead and get all that printed out, get the paperwork done on it, and there we go. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put his license plate back on. I just needed that for the information. Alright, there we go. 
I don't know why it has different numbers, but either way, we got it on there. So maybe it's an update in numbers. All right, so our parts coming in for our headlights and the, the, anyways, we got our lights in. So let's go ahead and install them. Uh, there we go. All right. So we got them on and Wheel World has done, uh, brought the new tire and wheel. So let's go ahead and get it installed. I think it looks good. All right, take it off. Got to balance it. And since this is a brand new wheel, fresh out of the plastic wrap, uh, you don't have to clean the surface, but it'd still be a good idea just in case they got a, uh, a lubricant on the wheels that keeps them from, uh, you know, corroding, go ahead and spray it off with some uh, uh, intake manifold cleaner, something that's not too corrosive. That way, if it does have a plastic coating over this finished wheel, you don't strip the plastic coating off of the wheel and make it look all hazy and foggy. But, all right. But I think real world, they, they actually give you just straight up polished metal. There is no protective coating, so it probably did have oil on it. Uh, what's going on? Why is it not letting me put the tire on here? Oh, yeah, we got to put our tie rod in. Alright, and whoa. Go ahead and put this fresh new wheel on. Alright, we got that on there. Alright, so while we're doing this, we're going to go ahead and, uh, oh yeah, we got to fill up the power steering fluid reservoir too. That way our power steering works. What it does, how power steering system works, is on the side of the engine, it's got a compression pump. What this does is it compresses this fluid back out of this. It compresses that fluid with this pump. Where is the power steering? Yeah, let's. Yeah, all right, right here. I thought that was the AC compressor. But what this does is it sucks the fluid, it compresses it, and sends that pressurized fluid to the rack. Whenever you turn the steering wheel, it opens up a valve, a pneumatic, or not pneumatic, but a, uh, a hydraulic valve. Whenever it can tell that you're turning left well it pushes that cylinder the opposite direction that way it turn it helps assist you turning the steering wheel to the left and you're not actually feeling the real weight of the vehicle I know what that feels like because I deleted the power uh, steering system on my Honda that way I would have less drag on the motor and it would have more performance and gas mileage but I also, you know, it's gonna, you're gonna build up some arm strength fighting with that steering wheel trying to turn it. But once you get rolling, it's actually really easy to turn. The momentum and the wheels turning make it easier to turn the vehicle with no power steering. So just a thing to remember. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and do our full diagnosing. We're gonna hit it with the OBD2 scan tool. See if we got any electronics that have failed. Engine's looking immaculate. So that means this thing should be putting down some horsepower pretty close to stock. Alright. Engine checked out good, at least on the OBD scan tool. Let's we already kinda checked our internals, but we're gonna check it anyways. Oh yeah. This is a this is a good motor. I mean, a very good motor. This car ain't really that old, guys. And he's done already done tore it up. But uh, let's check it with our electrical meter. A lot of the times, whenever you're running over stuff, tearing up wiring, it can cause you to blow fuses and a lot of bad things. We're just gonna give it a once over, just to make sure. And doing this gives the customer a report of everything that you check. Remember, some people are out to get you in this world. This just double checks you and says, hey, I did the work. We're even going to check the man's or the boy's tires. He's got some, oh, he got a hundred. That was the one we just replaced. 
uh, all the tires are in the green, so we are good. Um, one more test, and that's going to be our fuel pressure test to make sure fuel components are good. Yep, looking good. And normally, if it's bad, the gauge will read like closer to zero, but it's right there in the perfect area. So just by that needle, I knew everything was going to be good. All the injectors are good. The fuel pump's good. The fuel filter's good. So we should have no problems cranking this car. And uh, we don't have to use our forklift to move the car no more. We can go ahead and set it on the ground. And uh, you know, we can uh, crank this car up once we get it pushed out the door. We don't want to crank the car up in this part of the shop because uh you know we don't have the exhaust ventilation system in here so let's get it outside go ahead and get into it and let's see what we got all right so we cranked up all right hold on just a second guys i felt something right there I need to check my heart medicine you gotta make sure you keep up with your medicine guys that, that medicine that the doctor gives you is really important. It's really important to take, but I'm still good. I'm probably just a little bit anxious right now because of what's going on with my wife. So, I'll go ahead and take some of this anxiety medication. That's what it's there for. I don't take it unless I need it because I'm trying to get off all that stuff. But, hey. Throw me in your prayers too, guys. Pray for me to get off all these addictive medications. Because, man, the one that I'm on, it can kill you coming off of it. It's called lorazepam or Ativan, but it, it does work. It, it keep you calm, especially because I, I got a bad heart. And if I get too wound up, boy, my blood pressure will send me to the hospital. So... Anyways, let's go ahead and get this car moved to the uh, test path, and uh, and we'll go ahead and start with the full-blown test path. Following part, medium intercooler. Oh man, it, it ripped the intercooler off the car. Let's, let's go ahead and pull that front bumper, and uh, I didn't even see it show up. Alright, hold on. Do the magical spin, okay. All right, let's open it up. I don't see where the intercooler even is. All right, there it is, right there. All right, so we tagged that. Let's open up our O'Reilly's parts menu. Um, uh, we are gonna get them to send us an intercooler down here. Um, surprised the engine didn't throw a check engine light whenever we cranked it up. But really, your turbo is not making any boost at idle anyway, so it probably didn't even know. But it's a good thing we didn't suck anything up into the intake. That was a really good thing. But, uh, and I, you know what? I may actually have an intercooler over there in my dyno shop. Let's go see. Normally, I keep a few of them. See if there's anything on the floor. Alright, no, no intercoolers. But that's alright. O'Reilly's bringing the part over here. They done dropped it off over here in the uh, test pass. So, got it in a box. Go ahead and get this thing applied. Just try to save your money when you can. We, <clears throat> Oh, man. Dude, really? Alright, so we got to get this thing moved back to the car lift because it's going to be picky. I know you can put an intercooler on a car without having to put it on a rack, but let's just lift it up. Hmm. Sometimes this, there's some unnecessary stuff going on, but all right. So let's get our inner cooler. Lord, have mercy. I got a bad back, guys. I gotta get it up in there. All right. All right. Is it, is this good enough now? Thank you. Alright, intercooler, we're on there. Now, normally what there is, it doesn't show it, but there is a boost pipe that runs from here. Probably runs along there, uh, comes up through here, and it hooks up to this. This is going to be your down pipe. 
this is going to be your compression pipe so what it does it probably makes a 90 and comes down runs along this subframe and goes right to the intercooler and then from the other side this is where your pressurized air comes through here now remember anything up underneath pressure creates heat so what this intercooler does is it cools down the air that the turbo is is sucking in and whenever it compresses it it gets hot so it needs to be cooled down remember the colder the air that goes into the engine the more performance you have so and it also makes the air more dense which allows the computer to add more fuel to it remember the more fuel and air the bigger the bang more power but anyways all right so this uh intercooler pipe runs up here to your compression box um I don't know why they got a, a thing here because on the other side of this turbo there's going to be a pipe that runs over here and it connects to this all right your compression side which i was uh in, incorrect um this is going to be your boost pipe it's a small boost pipe i figured it'd be the other way around but anyways there's a pipe that goes from there to there connects to the turbo it sucks air through there compresses it and then pushes it out of there and goes to the intercooler goes back to the engine and voila you got boost so wanted to explain that for the kids that didn't understand how a turbo works for the adults and teenagers that are watching this i get you you already know this so all right let's get the bumper back on let's uh, get out of that. Let's move it back to the test path. Well, he wants a full report on this vehicle, so we're going to give him one. Alright. This is going to make sure suspension and brakes are good. Brakes are really good. Rear brakes are looking good. Let's check out the suspension. Alright, suspension's looking good. We're going to look for any red parts that our path identifies in this game. So, get ready, because they're coming. Alright, so, all, all is green, guys. Everything is looking good. Let's go ahead and get this vehicle. Woo, Lord, yeah, he tore up the front end of this car or something bad. So, let's go ahead and get it aligned for him. That way it's not all over the road. And yes, we will test this customer's car down there at the local drag strip. They know me. They ain't going to charge us for using their track. We're going to have to realign his headlights because we put new headlights on there. And right about in here. And that's even right there. All right. So, we got that headlights aligned everything's good let's get in here and we are going to uh we're gonna, well uh, okay so you got to do that outside of the car we're gonna go ahead and move it to the dyno all right we're here in the dyno bay so let's uh go ahead and open up the hood um open up the door just in case we got a hook up to the computer for anything it's everything is stock so we should just be able to run it like it is and let's see what type of power so she was producing 279 horsepower whenever it was a brand new assembled motor so hopefully it won't be a major decrease Alright, Jamie just messaged me and said that they're fixing to take her into the back. And they're 
is we only we only lost 13 horsepower so that's not that bad he's got the report but we're going to take a pause here because jamie just texted me from the hospital and said that they're fixing to take her in the back and uh go ahead and give her the cat scan so hopefully they can find the blockage so we're going to go into prayer right now i'm putting everything to the side dear heavenly father coming to you in the name of jesus and the holy spirit I ask you please look over my wife, let the doctors find the blockage or whatever is causing her the problem so they may be able to fix her and have her be with us for many more years so we can continue doing your work because we follow your will. We, we seek the kingdom of God and we're trying to get every, everybody else on the same boat with us that way their life can be a lot easier and eternal life you know sounds really great so uh you know we get to live forever for that but anyways i ask you to please be with my wife let them find the problem i ask you these things in Jesus' holy name amen and guys it's that simple that makes the biggest change in your life accepting god into everything and asking him for help because we are completely we're completely useless without him if if he is not in our life you are literally walking in the earth for you're just it's no reason i mean uh i mean if you're nice to other people and you're not a believer i mean hey at least you're being nice to people that's a good thing but i urge you to you know trust in the lord accept jesus as your savior and your life will get a whole lot better a whole lot better and you will have the ultimate gift because we're all eventually going to die one day and to be able to be in heaven with our heavenly father for eternity uh you know that's the ultimate gift and that's what i seek every day and i hope people follow me in this especially you little guys Y'all need to follow me in this. Y'all are going to deal with a lot of bad things in y'all's time. And having the knowledge and the wisdom of the Lord will get you through it. I promise you. Alright, so customer, you know, we got a full report on him. He's looking good. Let's go ahead and check the order form and make sure there isn't any uh, other thing. Front license plate. Well, we we did do that. We did put a license plate on there. Oh yeah, we had to take off the front bumper because the intercooler. All right, my bad. We gotta put that license. Boy, I'm always forgetting these license plates. All right, so customer order form is looking. Okay, I just put that front license plate on there. All right, let me just move this thing. We're going to normal mode. We're going to move it out front because we know that we got that license plate on there. Sometimes this game has a, a hard time. Or maybe this license plate goes in the back and this one goes up front. Okay. Alright. Okay, we just got them mixed up. That ain't no problem at all. We know that one went there. And we know that this one goes here. Alright. Check that order for him. And there we go. We're all green. So we, he had to have certain numbers up front, certain numbers in the back. So we are ready for this customer to come pick up his vehicle. And we did a lot of things for him. Hey, that was a, that was a really good payout. But you know what? Is $11,000. We're going to do one more thing for him since we have the fastest paint shop in the world at driven by christ auto we're going to go over here and we're going to get his car painted to match we ain't going to send him out of here with black bumpers and everything else so we're going to repaint the whole car we're going to go with the factory color you know what guys let's give him let's give him some some metallic in there we're going to try to match it up to the original color which was that right maybe a little bit darker you know what we're going to go even that much further over. We are going to go metalness. We're going to give it a lot of metal. We're going to give it a ton of metallic flake into that. And we don't want no... Whoa, wait a minute. Yeah, we don't want no, no roughness in the paint. And clear coat. 
that's basically if it's matte or shiny we do want a good really good clear coat on this and looks pretty good looks looks actually it looks really good and we're gonna go with that see we got toner we can actually uh, also change the the brightness of it the saturation uh, we can do all types of stuff with paint but anyways a gonna be happy he's got a new paint job so we'll get him out front and just in time we got five minutes left on this video and don't worry guys we are still going to stay open today we are fixing to get in there and continue working on our drag car so customer is extremely happy his total payout was eleven thousand four hundred and seventy nine dollars and we made profit on this we didn't uh you know we was able to bless the customer with a few hookups on parts and getting them fixed for him he's gonna leave overall happy because we started out with uh i forgot what we started with today it don't matter we satisfied the customer he's ready to go all right so he come and pick that car up and uh you know, like we had a good episode on episode nine that was a pretty fun little job and that that is a really cool little car to upgrade and make fast we'll build a race car but we're going to keep working on our driven by christ race car so uh anyways that was going to be episode nine uh we're going to go take a lunch break real quick and uh i'll catch y'all in the next episode guys that's going to be episode 10 of driven by christ auto later